Pepco reporters. Welcome back to my channel. I am so thrilled to be back in the pods with you for another season of Love is Blind. How are you guys? You guys truly have been here with me, well, you know, the majority of you since season one of the show. And I'm so thankful and happy to be back for season seven with you guys now. Like, I so far have only watched the debut episode, okay? And already I am engrossed by the season. There are some people that I love and adore, and there are some people that I'm not liking too much. And then there's this one person that I find to be a total riot, just there for a good time, um, not a long time potentially, and I love that. So let's get it, well, okay, let's get into the person who I really, truly cannot stand already. It is none other than Leo. He's the reason why I titled this recap Poor little rich boy. He is just the just the epitome of like Nepo baby who just like his whole identity is being rich. And he brags about it like he had anything to do with the fact that he was rich. You got lucky, Leo. Stop pretending, okay? Uh, anyway, let's get into this recap, you guys. It's going to be a long one. It's a doozy. I've got half of it on my computer, half of it in my notes. Um, and I just, I really want to, you know, talk about, first of all, the ladies of the season. They are absolutely stunning. Like we've had some standout beauties since the beginning of the show, but this season, I feel like the majority of the girls, if not all the girls are super duper beautiful on TikTok. I'm going to be showing all the face cards that I am especially drawn to. So make sure to head up my grace report TikTok for that. Um, but they're all so, so, so beautiful. Really, truly, truly, truly. I think the guys this year are better looking than usual, but still, I think the ladies take it like they do every season. Um, uh, there's this one girl specifically uh first of all for me i think ashley like every time i see her in like the group scenes like she just is a scene stealer for me um then there's a girl there who's also really beautiful her name is taylor she looks like olivia munn and i really do hope that she is a better person than olivia munn is and there are a lot of others who i will be talking about on tiktok now let's get back to ashley shall we she talks about how she wanted to get married because her mom was married twice and neither of those marriages worked out and she told her mom that she was going to be the one to get married and have it stick and i'm like now what like i didn't get that reasoning you know what i mean like typically people and i'm not saying it's better to swing in this way of the pendulum but typically people go oh my parents they were like divorced once or twice three four you know like more extreme times you know um so i'm never going to get married but she's like oh my mom didn't get it right so i'm gonna get it right type vibes i was like all right ashley like that's an odd motivation like but go do you, I guess. Have fun with that. Now, I do think that she and Tyler, well, they look, they would look great together in the real world. And I really enjoyed the chemistries that the chemistry that they had in the pods. So I feel like we're kind of starting off pretty strong so far. And I really hope that, you know, nothing ruins that for us until Nick comes up. And I, you know, as soon as he opens up his mouth, I go, oh God, F boy. We've already got an F boy. We can never have a season of the show without the classic F boy. And he is there to bring that energy to us. And, you know, listen, it is what it is. When you're out in the dating world, there's always going to be this, these smooth talking Nick types of guys. So it's nice to see him illustrated at least so that, you know, you can see the signs. No offense to you, Nick. You know, maybe you've grown a little bit since filming the show, but like, you know, that he is a good example for us on like what to, what to look out for the smooth talk the ones who only want to have shallow conversation about the physical and things like that, right? Now, um, there was someone else. You know how I told you guys that I could not stand Leo? There's a girl on the show who was working my damn nerve, and it is none other than Hannah. Hannah, where do I even start with this girl, okay? Like, she is there in the ladies lounge, right? She's like, oh, you know, I worked so hard like to get my education. I got a very lucrative career and I left my career to come here and look for a husband. The way I wanted to vomit when she said that, I'm sorry, but what? You're 26 years old, Hannah. You're getting started in your career and you've already been like blessed enough to make a lot of money and you decide to stop your career, put yourself at a disadvantage, right? Like, economically speaking in life right now to go look for a man on a dating competition show that is weird that is so 
so weird. And again, I have to emphasize, she's only 26 years old. It's not like she's like late in life and this is her last chance. Like, girl, you were just getting started in life. Something else has to be going on there. Like, I would hope that she's at least trying to launch an influencer career or something to make her money. You know what I mean? But if she's leaving her livelihood to go look for a man, then I'm sorry. Her parents need to have a long talk with her because that that is a mess. Honestly, that is just wow. That's really sad. I'm sorry. And I don't want to sound judgmental. And, you know, although I am being judgmental, um, that's really sad. Like, a man, a marriage, all that stuff is finicky. It is not permanent. There have been many divorces in the love is blind world. Okay, you guys, there have been many times where these couples, they don't even make it to the altar or they make it to the altar and they say no. So why would you leave your job, your career for that? Something is off with this girl. I'm just going to say it right here, right now. Something is off with her. And I, you know, I, I feel like she, I hope she's being un, inauthentic about that and that her real motivation is to make influencer money because influencer money is good money, you guys. Like Natalie and Deepti, for example, have talked about making like half a million dollars in influencer money since doing the show. Okay. Otherwise, please don't tell me you are so brainwashed that you would give up your livelihood for the chance of finding a man. <laughs> like, ooh. anyway, so. And she, you know who she reminds me of a little bit in the way that she represents herself on the show? She reminds me of Chelsea, the one who claims she looked like Machine Gun Kelly's wife, aka Megan Fox, right? Yes, it is true that Chelsea looked like Megan Fox look, used to look a couple of faces ago, but she's plus size, right? And typically when you tell a man that you look like Megan Fox, they're thinking you look exactly like Megan Fox and you're Megan Fox's size. And that is how she wound up shooting herself in the foot and, um, you know, getting a guy who was disappointed or not really all that attracted when he like saw her and realized that there was a part of the equation that was missing in her resemblance to Megan Fox, right? Um, and I think that that's something that is going to happen to Hannah. So she is having a conversation with Nick. And um, she tells him like, oh, like, you know, in high school, I was the cheerleader who dated the quarterback. <sighs> Hannah, 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 when you tell a man that you were a cheerleader in high school and that you were dating a quarterback, they're going to expect you to look more like a Britney type. OK, you guys, or a Jessica type. Remember from that season with Chelsea, who said that she looked like Megan Fox, right? They're expecting you to be skinny, mini and, and either brunette or blonde, but most likely blonde, blonde. OK, and they're just expecting a certain aesthetic that Hannah just does not fit into. Hannah is a cute girl. OK, but I think that she was strategic in the way that she was describing herself. And, you know, I think that she was a little bit misleading in the way that she was describing herself. And, um, you know, uh, and I think she was doing it on purpose in order to secure a match. And this is something that we see time and time again. It never works out for the people who do this. And it's typically women. Um, and it leads to a lot of pain down the road for them, you know. And so obviously that entices someone as shallow as Nick. And he's like, oh, I was like this. I, I don't watch football. So he said he was some kind of like position that wasn't a quarterback. Right. And so he was super duper excited about her. Um, and I was like, oh, God. Um, or sorry, it wasn't even Nick. She was talking to that guy, Leo, the art dealer. And, you know, one thing about Leo outside of money that really irks me is that he doesn't ask women questions, or at least Hannah anyway. So he's having his date with Hannah, and Hannah's talking about herself physically like this. And he um, basically is just like, he's so cold. He only has brief answers for all the questions that she asks. He doesn't ask her any questions back or seem all that engaged. And I honestly felt as though Hannah was much too charismatic for him. I'm like, this guy is a total dud, Hannah. Like, you are so bubbly. You are so full of life. You know, I think that you could do better personality-wise for sure. And at the end of the date, like, uh, what does Leo say? He's like, wow, Hannah, I really like you. This is a great date. And it made me laugh because you see this on TikTok all the time that these men who can sit on a date with you, not ask you a single, literally a single question about yourself. And this has happened to me once where this guy asked me out on a date. We met on my birthday year, uh, last year, I think, um, you know, at a bar. 
Um, and then he's like, oh, do you want to go on a date? So we go on this date and the whole day I'm asking him questions. I'm taking an interest. The man never asked me a single question. He's like, wow, this is a great date. Like, let's go out again. Uh, I think the F not. And that's what Leo is exhibiting, you know, and it just made me laugh so, so, so much. Um, and, um, so let's get into him being an art dealer. So he really takes pride in the fact that this is his job. And obviously when someone tells you that they are a professional art dealer, in my case, anyway, let me know if you feel the same way, but I always go, okay, so this is a Nepo baby. This is someone whose parents, you know, maybe owned a gallery or something or like owned an expensive piece of art and had them sell it. And now they're an art dealer, you know, and he knows this. And that is why he is constantly leading with that. And it's going to be interesting to see how that ultimately winds up working out for him and, you know, how he chooses to navigate. Um, spoiler alert, he leads with it while also like acts like he's victimized by it so much. And it's super duper irritating. Now let's get into a girl named Brittany that I'm liking so far. And I think you guys are going to be surprised that I like her. Although if you're like one of my true OGs from season one, you know that I always loved Jessica. Jessica got the wrath of the world. Like she really like, you know, she got beat up hardcore in season one, but I always said that I liked her and I felt like she was authentic. I felt like she was fun, lighthearted kind of girl. That is the vibe that I am getting from Brittany. So Brittany pops up and she's like, listen, I am just here. I'm to be a trophy hat wife. That is my goal in life. Okay. Um, and as soon as she said that, I said, oh my God, this is it. I know that Leo just said that he liked Hannah, but I think that Leo and Brittany are actually going to be the ones that pair off because Leo keeps on dropping out feelers. He knows he's not the most handsome man in the pack. Okay. And I'm not calling him ugly. I'm just saying he's not the most handsome man in the pack and he knows it. And so he has to lead with money sub subtly while also pretending he doesn't want to lead with money. And he's doing these things, you know, so that the girls can start like marketing themselves to him. Right. So you've got Hannah claiming to be like, you know, this cheerleader that all the quarterbacks are after. Right. And now you've got Brittany who's very like, you know, unapologetic about the fact that she wants to be a kept woman. And I think that that is going to be the one that Leo goes for. Okay. Um, and so um, she just seems like she's here for a good time and potentially some fame. And she's not being mischievous about it. She told us straight up. So if you're mad at her, be mad at yourself. Okay. She's not going to mislead anyone. She's telling us straight up, that's who and what she is. And I love that. To me, if a person's being honest and upfront about what they want, it's up to you to decide whether or not it aligns with you. If it does, good, great. Right off into the sunset together. Because as much as people like to hate on it, broke men and women who cannot pull men to finance their lifestyles will always hate on women like, um, like Britney. But guess what? Rich men love women like Britney. They want these kinds of women. They want women who, who's, who, who focus on looking good, being beautiful, being fit, um, and being fun. That's it. That's all they want in a wife, okay? They don't want her, you know, toiling away at work or doing this, that, and the other. And they want her to be able to travel, to do this, to do that on a dime, you know? And um, then, uh, you know, if you're a woman like Brittany, like you've seen it for yourself, I'll tell you guys, I've seen it for myself here, you know, living in uh, Paris for five years. Let me tell you this, especially when it comes to Italian men, you know, I don't know what you ladies are up to in your lives, but I'll tell you this, this happens to me actually rather, rather often, you know, where you meet like a nice guy, he seems like a nice, decent guy. And then he'll just start telling you about like how rich he is or this or that, or like, you know, they'll offer to fly you somewhere. They'll offer you like everything you want. These guys exist. So don't hate the player hate the game. Don't hate on Brittany. I love her. And I really want to see her achieve her trophy wife dreams. Spoiler alert. I didn't go that route. <laughs> I went for the looks. <laughs> so um, now let's get into Taylor. Okay. So Taylor is some, she's like a chemist or some kind of scientist. And she and Garrett seem to be a really, really good match. So not only are they both in the sciences, but they both have tattoos about their careers in the sciences. I don't know why, but for me, that was just so serendipitous and it gave soulmate vibes. And I really do hope that like, that's something that like ends up, you know, panning out for the two of them. I like their temperaments. They both come across as very like, you know, even keeled, chill and whatnot. And so, so far I'm really, really liking that pairing. Um, and, um, then we move on to another guy, like this episode, boom, 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 boom. every time you blink, new guy, new girl, new couple, new something forming, right? So we're turning over that way. And who are we introduced to muster top 10? He, first of all, he is super duper petty because his last girlfriend told him that she hated that shirt. So he said, you know what? I'm going to buy this shirt. 
I'm going to leave you. I'm going to sign up for Love is Blind and wear this shirt in my promo photo and in the pod so that when you watch Love is Blind, you think of how you lost me and this shirt. So that is something I do like about him. Um, he claims to be a reformed F boy, but listen, I don't know that people ever really change all that much. I hope he'll prove me wrong, but I, I'm kind of a skeptic when it comes to these kinds of men. I think that they need just deep therapy and I don't know that he's done that kind of work. Okay. Now um, he has his date with Ashley, the girl that I really like so far. And it turns out that both of her parents have multiple sclerosis, otherwise known as MS. And it's a very, very, very sad, um, you know, disease that slowly just de uh, causes your body to deteriorate. Okay. Um, and let me tell you this, when she started talking, uh, so her, her parents are separated, let me say, right. And then they both found other people. So her dad got married to her stepmom and then her mom didn't remarry, but she had a long-term life partner afterwards, her stepdad. So they both have MS, right? And the story that she explains made me think of Hannah and how she left her job to find a man. Because guess what? In, in the medical world, there is a phenomenon that they are very acutely aware of, which is that if a wife gets sick with like cancer or something like MS or something really, really, really like, you know, um, that just completely destroys their life or their health, the, the husband or the male partner is very likely to leave. Women typically will stay with you in sickness and in health. Men will not, husbands will not, okay? And there's a whole thing on how, uh, you know, if a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, as part of the preparation for her, like, you know, battling breast cancer, they're also preparing her for her husband to leave her. So I thought of Hannah, when Ashley shares this story, she goes, oh, so, you know, uh, they, they're having a hard time moving. Like, uh, my stepdad, like his wife stayed and she like bathes him and he'll fall. He's like double her size. He's like 200 pounds. He's six something. She's so tiny. Like she'll bathe him. She'll pick him up when he falls. She's still there. But my mom and her long-term partner, he left. And I said, isn't that so typical? This is something you hear about all the time. And so that's why I still am like this. When Hannah talked about leaving her livelihood to come out looking for a man. You know, and it's not only just like they'll leave you in sickness. Let's talk about if you give them a damn kidney. I'm looking at you, George Lopez. You give your husband a damn kidney just for him to turn around and cheat on your ass. That happened with another celebrity as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like things like this to where you go, like, you know, I, I feel bad for women like Hannah who are so brainwashed that this is the epitome of what they want in life. You know what I mean? Like love and men are just so fickle. So it really should not be your holy grail altar thing. But that is enough ranting on my end. By the guys, it, by the way, guys, if you see me looking down, it's because I've now changed to my notes. Remember how I told you guys I got a, 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 um, a lover who is not a rich Italian looking to spoil my ass? <laughs> but he, he is really lovely and he does spoil me. Um, he does not speak English. So, and he was here with me while I was watching that episode. So I put it on and then I put the subtitles on in his language. He is Montenegrin. So I put it on in Croatian because, you know, Serbo, Montenegro, Croatian, it's all the same language. So we were watching it together. And that's when I switched from like taking notes to just putting it on writing. It was his first time watching Love is Blind, by the way, which is really, really cute. Anyway, um, let's get back into that a date story. Okay. So yeah, so that story really like shook me and it just reminded me of like, you know, how fickle love can be, you know, for, for women. So we really have to watch our backs. Um, and now, uh, what does yellow, yellow shirt Tim reveal? He reveals that both of his sisters died. What happened to Tim's sisters? You guys, why did they die? Was it an accident? Was it illness? I am just so, so, so sad, so saddened to hear that story. I, you know, that really is a lot to deal with. And, you know, my, my heart really does go out to him and his family on that, you guys. Um, there also does come up this conversation about phone passwords. And I really do want to know what you guys feel about that. So Tim and Ash, you're talking about like, you know, would you be open to like sharing phone passwords, looking through each other's phones and stuff like that? Personally, I've got nothing to hide. So I do naturally when I'm dating, like, you know, if I'm cooking or I'm doing something, my hands are wet and a message comes by, like, I'll just tell like, you know, the guy, like, you know, my boyfriend, like, oh, like open up my phone, like, or use my face, you know, open up my phone and then respond to this because there's nothing in there. But um, I wouldn't expect them to like look through my phone or anything like that. I would feel kind of like, oh, you don't trust me kind of thing. And I don't look through, you know, my my man's phone either. Like I just, I want to have a certain level of trust in a relationship. If you're playing me or whatever, it'll come out eventually, but I'm not going to go digging because I just, I don't want to be in that kind of ambiance, you know? Um, and I don't like, when does it end? Is this something you do your entire relationship? 
that's my personal feeling, but I do want to know how you feel about it. So please do let me know in the comment section. Do you go looking through the phone? Yes or no. Do you share your password? Yes or no. And how does that impact your relationship? What does it say about the level of trust that you have for your partner in general? Um, now let's get back to Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo. He finally has his date with Brittany, trophy wife, Brittany. So rich Leo, trophy wife, Brittany. And he's just telling her about how rich she was and stuff like that. And I feel at first I go, oh my God, Leo, you said that you don't want a woman to like look to you for money or to be with you for money. That's a big mistake. But the more that Leo talks, the more obvious it becomes that that's exactly what he wants. He wants the type of woman that is taken care of by rich men. And the type of woman that is taken care of by rich men is typically a very beautiful woman who already takes good care of herself. So he wants a hot girl on his arms. And again, he knows that he the only way he's going to be able to pull her is by leading with money. So, um, so at this point, Brittany, she's not wasting any time. She told us she's here to be a trophy wife. So she says, Leo, what are your thoughts about 50-50? He says, um, listen, I'm not into the whole 50-50 thing, especially if I make more. Um, but I do want for my like wife to contribute in some capacity. And so Brittany goes, okay, well, listen, I can work with that. It's better than the other men. The other men are strictly 50-50. And I'm not doing that. I'm letting you know right here, right now, Leo, I don't play that game, okay? And um, you know, I'm just letting you know as well that my ex took care of me 100%. And, you know, again, I love the honesty. I relate so much to Brittany because I'm in the same, I'm not doing 50-50 with a man. No, it's not happening, right? Um, congratulations to the ladies that do and the men that do, but it's just not my vibe. You know, everybody is different in what it is that they're looking for, what kinds of dynamics. And it's all about going for men um, and women who align with your vision and your values. And I just, again, it's so annoying to me when people hate on this because it's like, why do you, it's not your wallet. It's not your relationship. Like go do, you know, your little 50, 50 with someone else. And that's that there are many men who do not go. If I asked my boyfriend to go 50, 50 with me, he would laugh in my freaking face because that is just not the way it rolls for him. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, why I date within certain cultures um, and not within others, because it'll they align with my personal values, you know? So I'm really excited to see this like play out on TV. TV in all honesty, right? And so good for her. So at this point, you can see that Leo, Mr. I don't want to leave with, lead with money, his ears start perking up. He said, oh, you had another man taking care of you 100%. You must be hot. You must be hot. So then he's like, you know what? I don't mind that, Brittany. I really don't mind that. So again, you're going to see, and I already know they're going to come in my comments and start like acting like Leo is some kind of like lost little puppy victim. He knows. He knows what he's doing. Talking about, I'm an art dealer. My parents are rich. I went to the country clubs, this, that. Like he, all he does is brag about money. And Brittany told him that she likes money. Brittany told him that she will not do 50-50 and that she had a man who took care of her 100%. If he wanted to walk away from this and to not finance her life, he would. So, you know, all you little groupie boys can sit down, you know, <laughs> on that he is okay he is making moves at, that align with his values as a grown man he's lying when he speaks listen watch his actions do not listen to his words because his his words and his actions do not align in any capacity okay um and so leo at this point he opens up about being insecure about being used for money um and again it's bullshit Brittany starts throwing around baby names you know to to hook him in and she's like you know i've always wanted to name my son leo and he's like uh you know i don't want my son to have the same name as me she's like it's okay i'll change it levi so they get into that. Then she wanted a daughter named Blaze or something. And then she's like, oh, Brittany. And his last name starts with a B. I think it's Bodhi, Brody, something like that. Brittany Brody. So they talk about how nice that would sound or whatever. And so at that point, you can see that he is envisioning his life with trophy wife Britt. Oh my God. I really do hope that these two get engaged. It will be hilarious. I would love it. Okay. Um, then what happens? Leo goes back to the uh, male quarters to talk about his date, right? And just life in general. And he starts bragging about being so rich. That's all he ever talks about, how rich he is. Everybody has to know he grew up with money. That's his only personality trait. It really, really is. And again, 
I think it's because he's insecure. Okay. Leo is a decent looking guy. Okay. You guys like, I, I wouldn't say he's ugly, but he's not someone that is a head turner. Okay. He's not, he's not someone who's particularly tall or buff or particularly like, you know, gorgeous or handsome or anything like that. He's your run of the mill guy. And he knows this. And that is why he like hides behind money so much. And on top of that, he does not have a personality. He doesn't have a curiosity for people. He just wants to talk about himself and his parents' money. And it's just, honestly, I think he's a bit of a joke and I think he's a bit of a nightmare. Um, and uh, I just know it's only going to get worse as the season progresses. And ah, I'm buckling in for it. I am so, so happy. Now he gets another date with Hannah now. So as you can see, he's between Brittany and Hannah and he starts with uh, his little poor little rich boy shtick, you know, uh, still neglecting to ask Hannah any questions about herself. And then he tells her that they're twin flames. And I'm like, dude, how are you twin flames? You don't even know anything about this girl that she hasn't volunteered. You have not asked any questions about her. All you talk about with her is how rich you are and how you guys like to travel, like the most basic, like conversational topic ever. You know what I mean? Like, he's just so beyond self-absorbed, okay? Uh, and he just talked at her the entire day. And listen, although Hannah is happy to hear that he feels so strongly for her, she is still open to pursuing other connections, okay? Um, but unfortunately for her, her other connection is F-boy Nick. Hannah, you got bad taste. You're 26 years old. You left your job to try and marry either a, a self-absorbed art dealer who is not the slightest bit interested in learning about you or an F-boy. Girl, I really hope you can get your job back after this. I hope all you did was take a sabbatical and that job is still cozy waiting for you because neither of these relationships are going to work out, girl. you got a lot of maturing to do. Uh, marriage should be the last thing on your mind at this point. Um, so um, now let's talk about her date with Nick. And you guys, I am not meaning to say, sound harsh. I, I, I pride myself on being honest and authentic about the way I feel. Okay. You guys, I, without being harsh, I, I'm being authentic. When I tell you that Leo is insecure because he knows that he is like not a standout, you know, kind of, kind of guy. Okay. I'm being honest when I tell you guys that Hannah made a big mistake. Um, talking about being the cheerleader who like scored the quarterbacks. Um, because the, the guys she told that to are expecting her to look more so like Brittany. Okay. Me like thinness matters so much to men, especially white men. It, it is like up here for them. Thinness is like a Holy grail for them. So like, if you're going to lead with looks, this and that, you gotta be thin. You really do. And, um, you know, I, and I hate that for Hannah because I think that she's a very cute girl. She's a very pretty girl. Look at the way she's put together here too, right? She obviously cares about the way she looks and the way she styles herself. If she could have gotten a nice non shallow man, but she's leading with shallowness. And that is why she is torn between two awful guys. Okay. So anyway, like let's, let's get back into the shallowness, right? So she told Leo, she was the cheerleader who got the quarterbacks. Now in her date with F boy, Nick, the two of them are just sitting around talking about how they're hot AF. Again, I'm sorry, but you guys stop, stop, stop. What are you guys talking about? Okay. Um, anyway, let's get into a, people that I like more and people that are actually like mature and seem to be in this experiment for the right reasons. Okay. Because Hannah, Leo and Nick are driving me crazy. Let's get into someone I really like. So far, I really like Garrett and I really like Taylor. So they've got their um, date and Garrett actually set up a chess game for him and Taylor to play uh, behind the screens. And I thought it was so special. So far, they are my favorite couple. Although I will admit that I find Taylor to be a little bit pretentious at times. You know, I hope she can dial that down, you know, become a little bit more down to earth. Um, but maybe it's just the nerves that has her talking this way. I don't know. It's still early, but so far I will say they're my faves, okay? She doesn't want to tell Garrett her her mom's name. So she just gets into the story about how her mom, her parents, parents are awesome. Her mom is really cool. We all call her by her first name because it's just so like, you know, easy her name, but oh, I can't tell you her name. Girl, you didn't even have to stop and do all the theatrics. You did that on purpose. She's like, I can't tell you her name because it'll give away my racial identity, you know? So at this point, you already told him that you're not Caucasian, right? Because you know, he's, you know, he's Caucasian as it gets. And, um, you were trying to like, have him like you, uh, like regardless of your race, this, that, or the other. So why even bring it up? Why even bring it up? 
You know, that was a very weird move on Taylor's part. She could have just said that we all call her by her first name and then just like say, oh, but like that's a, you know, that's a story for another day. You know, and if Garrett asked a question, like, what is her first name? Then you bring up the fact that you're not going to say it. But he did it. She just was like, you know, the first thing that I'm not going to tell you because it'll tell you that I'm ethnic. You know, I, I really didn't like that move on her part. But listen, she's nervous. She's nervous. And you are, you are stuck in this room. You're supposed to make all this conversation. So I'm going to give her a pass on that. And you can tell that it like already like caused some huh in Garrett's mind. Now, before we get into that, I have to say, I knew she was Eurasian. I was like, she looks just like Olivia Munn. Um, so at this point, um, Garrett's like, listen, I have only ever dated white girls. So you telling me that like, there's something, you know, in there that might be a little bit spicy is a little nerve wracking to me. I'm not going to lie. You know, I find you to be so like elusive and evasive and stuff. And so now he's starting to panic. He's like, just how ethnic is this girl? So I'm sure he's got like some like little limits to like, you know, how, you know, white races or colors or nationalities or whatever he's open to dating and stuff. And so he's scared that like, she'll fall in the no pile. Uh, but listen, like, I think they'll be fine. I really, really do. And I'm really rooting for this couple. I hope that this does not come between the two of them. So we're going to have to put them on ice for the time being and head over to this guy. I think his name is Tyler. I'm going to pull up this picture so I can remind myself while I sip some water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's him. Tyler. So he is on a date and he is telling his date about how his Serbian mom was cut off by her family for having kids with a black man and then like not having familial support, the relationship not working out with the baby's father. Um, she went broke. And so like she and her kids, like him and his siblings, they grew up in poverty. Like they were struggling to make ends meet and everything like that. And that was a very, very, very like sad story to hear, you know? Um, and then her own mom died of like cancer and like, you know, she went into a depression over that. And so it was huge. It really, really was huge. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he was on a date with Ashley because I was writing by hand. Like, you know, I was like doing abbreviations and I, I think I completely zapped on it, but I believe he was on a date with Ashley when he was uh, recounting that. And he tells her that he's just so full of love and he just needs someone to share it with. And I thought that it was super duper beautiful. And um, then he goes back to the group setting of the boys. And did you guys notice that this episode, this debut episode, it was all about the men's room. The men were bonding. They were having honest, authentic, vulnerable conversations. And I want to give them a little golf club for, clap for that because typically that's something you see on the women's side. And, you know, I have been longing for that on the men's side. And it's finally delivering this season. So that was a really beautiful sight to see. Um, and so I guess he does confirm that his date was with Ashley because when he's over there amongst the men, he tells them that he... Um, that he loves Ashley, you guys. And like, this is the first relationship he feels safe in. Typically he feels pressure to just be like the protector and to not worry about his own feelings. But when he's with Ashley, he feels safe. And I was just like, wow, that is gorgeous. Good for you, Tyler. I really, really hope your relationship with Ashley works out. I'm putting you up there on my favorite list alongside Garrett and Taylor, okay? And then you've got uh, Leo talking about how he... And Brittany are the type of people who would attract each other, like in the natural world, like, you know, pretentious rich boy looking for like, you know, a wannabe trophy wife type thing. And Tyler, who is just so over the moon in love with Ashley is like, listen, like, we're not here to repeat the same patterns we repeat outside. You're supposed to push yourself to like, you know, look for what you're truly, truly missing, because obviously whatever you were doing out there was not working. Uh, push, push yourself, push yourself and find the right person for you. And then another guy tells Leo, listen, Leo, Brittany's going to be expensive. And then what does Leo say? The same Leo who's claiming that he does not want to be used for his money. I'll give you a second, you guys. Okay. What does he say? He says, oh, she's going to be expensive. That's okay. Cause I got money. So there you go. So there you go. Leo is looking for a Brittany. He's pretending he's not looking for a Britney, but he's looking for a Britney. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that. We, we will never see the end of rich men looking for beautiful women, okay? They, they will never stop wanting to spend money on beautiful women. They will never stop wanting women to be thin, fit, you know, beautiful, um, you know, keeping up with their skincare, hair care, makeup, plastic surgery, whatever. There will always be a market for that. And if that is who you are, that is who you are. And that is perfectly fine. 
Okay, like maybe your other relationships didn't work out because other variables were missing, but it doesn't mean that you have to go swing completely in the opposite. And that's the thing about Leo. Uh, he, I don't think there's anything with, wrong with what he's looking for. Just like I don't think there's anything with, wrong with what Brittany's looking for. I just wish that he could step up and be honest about what he's looking for. Because if he's not, he's going to make people like Brittany look bad. And, you know, she's going to get a lot of attacks based off of, you know, what she wants when she's just being honest, right? Um, now let's get into um hannah so hannah was the other person that leo was leaning towards you know cheerleader girly type versus trophy wife girly type right so she i'm sorry you guys but she is a fool for falling for the f boy who she knows objectifies her and wouldn't want to see her without makeup she's literally like oh you know like i'm thinking about nick so much but like i know he objectifies me i know he wouldn't want to see me without makeup like and you're here looking for a husband and I feel like I keep repeating this. I'm a broken record, but you lost your job to look for a man like this. Really? You know, like, are you well in the head? Where are your parents? Because like, I'm sorry, but they flopped. Um, and all the other girls are telling her. And this is why I don't like the youngins on here. She's only 26 years old. You know, she's giving 26. She claims she's so mature and so knowledgeable, but she's giving 20s, you know, a girl in her 20s dating and making, you know, the same old cliche, stupid mistakes, right? And all the other grown ass women in their 30s are like, girl, don't play for that. You know, don't fall for that F boy. Like the difference in maturity is night and day there. It truly, truly is. So um, uh, they have their date, right? And this is going to be their final date because F boy Nick wants to propose to her. And he's like, listen, I want to marry you. Like, I don't want a girlfriend. And, you know, um, then he also tells us, he doesn't tell Hannah this, but he tells us that he's never truly loved before. Okay. And so um, after he tells her that he wants a wife, she's like, okay, but like, why do you want a wife all of a sudden? When we're talking, you're always talking to me about how hot you are. Like you're the football player. You're the good looking guy. Like, what happened? Like, why didn't you get a wife before? Why did you have to come here to get a wife? And he's like, well, what about you? You're the cheerleader. You're a hottie. You're young. You're successful. You're looking for a husband. Why didn't it happen for you? And that's the thing. Neither of them are being honest about their level of attractiveness. Are they attractive people? Yes. Okay. They're good looking. They're like, you know, people. But they're not the people that they're describing themselves as, okay? They're describing themselves as, like, supermodel, like, good looks, you know, super, like, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo level, like, good looks and athletics and this, that, and the other. And it is just not the truth. And that is why this relationship is not working out. Because they're both kind of going, well, it's not adding up now at this point. What is happening, you know? And um, it just makes me sad for them that they wasted each other's time like this, you know? And then she calls him out for all of the superficial conversations that they've been having and him being like, oh, I I can't wait to see you in a bikini. I can't wait to see you like this, like that. And yeah, so I'm happy that she's finally waking up to it and like seeing that like this guy just has the gift of gab. Nothing more, nothing less, you know? And then he's like, so I forgot to tell you when he asked her, he's like, okay, well, what about you and all the football players you were pulling on the quarterbacks? Ooh, she's like, you know, all those guys only want me because I'm hot. what you know what like i said i don't want to come off as harsh and mean or anything like that but i just feel like she's being so disingenuous and i don't understand why she is not being honest and she's not just being herself you know like i, I you know and this goes for nick as well i don't think either of them are being truthful they're not being truthful you guys okay they're they're not like I said, they're average, uh, not average, they're attractive people in like an average kind of way to me anyway, maybe my, maybe my, my, um, my perception is off because listen, I live in Paris, y'all, the people are beautiful. <laughs> the people are beautiful. They're chic. They're stylish. They're like, you know, super, you know, fit and shape this and that and the other, like you're seeing, you know, you know, very attractive people on average. So to me, I'm seeing these people and I'm like, these are two run of the mill, regular, nice looking people, you know, but the way they're talking, you would think that these, there was a Victoria's Secret model and there was a Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, and it's making me sad because I think if they were honest with each other, they would have a really good connection and a real shot at love, but neither. And you know what? I'm thinking that these people are people that I would describe as avoidance because they're not able to like be real and vulnerable and whatnot. And that makes me sad. Okay. Now, um, at this point, like Nick is really trying to win over Hannah. Okay. He's like, listen, I would love you even if you're not perfect. She's like, yeah, what about my body? If it's not like what you're expecting, like this, that, or the other, he's like, I would love you anyway, blah, blah, blah. And to be honest with you, I don't believe him. 
Okay, I'm going to be honest, just based off what I've seen of this show for the seven years or seven seasons I've been watching it, I do not believe him. Um, and then he kind of like proposes like in a way, okay? And she's like, listen, I can't accept, you know, to be your wife or whatever. And at this point, he's like, all right, well, let's, she said right now. So she was open to continuing to date, but he was like, okay, well, if you're not going to accept, then it's over. Basically, I wish you the best. I think you're beautiful inside and out. And, um, but no, continue also. Like we're going to continue in different directions. And listen, he did the best thing that he could have for himself. But I feel sad for the two of them because I really genuinely feel as though they both robbed themselves and each other of a real genuine heartfelt connection because neither of them are ready. They're both avoidant people making up these like fake personas, you know, or maybe they're that delusional. I don't know, but that's how I feel. Guys, how did you feel about the debut episode of Love is Blind season seven? Do you have similar opinions to me or are they different, even drastically different? Let me know because I love sharing perspectives with you, okay? In the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. Don't forget to subscribe for more recaps and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.